Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Today I want yeah. to talk. I want to talk about eruptions within. Uh, there are things that are going on inside of all of us, and and this message was for me. There's uh, no doubt in my heart about it that God has touched my heart, like Sherry said. Uh, and uh, what I've found is, as we've talked about these things, that it also affects a lot of our loved ones, and and even gives me some direction on how to pray for different people, and. It says that uh, our, the forces of life flow out of our heart. And uh, as I look around um, uh, the world, I, I see so much violence and, and anger and people burning their own neighborhoods and, and, and so many acts of violence and, and things just seem to be escalating. And, and I've been asking the Lord, what is going on? What's going on around me? And what's going on in my own life? And... Uh, I believe that this message uh, addresses a lot of those things because there can either be uh, in a person's heart bitterness or contentment, but not both. Uh, we, James said, uh, fresh water and bitter water uh, do not flow out of the same spring. And so we either have within us bitterness or contentment. And I want to talk about those two things, bitterness and contentment within us. And because those are the things that are going to spring up. And at the most unusual times, uh, it'll reveal what's in our heart. Uh, and if we have uh, anger, then that's going to lead to bitterness. Uh, it said in Hebrews chapter 12, 15, that there's a root of bitterness and we're not, we're to avoid a root of bitterness. It goes down and it springs up. It springs up at un, unlikely and unfavorable times when, when we don't want it to spring up. And it, by that, uh, it defiles many people. Many people, if, if one person has a root of bitterness, uh, then it's going to defile everybody they have influence on. Just it starts with one person, but if they're bitter, it's going to defile everybody they influence because their influence will be bitter. And so we want to talk about the difference between these two things, bitterness and contentment. Let's let's start first and think a little bit about bitterness. Where does bitterness come from? Well, it comes from anger. And it's not just anger, but it's anger stored up. And, and that continues. And uh, Paul wrote about anger in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 26 and 27. Uh, he says, be angry and sin not. So there are times a person can be angry. And so just being angry is not necessarily sin. It's what we do with it. See, as you go through every day, you encounter things that may make you emotional. It may make you angry. Uh, you may see violence in the world. You may see uh, abuse. You may see all kinds of things going Corruption. on. And, and uh, then it's going to matter what you do with the anger. And so if you don't have anger during the day, uh, then you may be dead uh, because yeah. people... <laughs> who are alive, they're going to see things that it's not going to be very pleasant and they're going to have emotion and response to it. But Paul said, be angry and sin not. So, so how, do we, how do we deal with anger? Well, he said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath or on your anger. And so we've got to deal with the anger before night comes. So if we have anger, and it might be because, let's say, uh, my spouse says something or my child says something. And then if I get angry about it, if, if I go to bed that night uh, with anger, then it's going to begin to develop a root and it's going to go down deep. And it will spring up at the most unlikely times. Uh, and not only that, but in the next verse, verse Ephesians 4.27, it says, don't give place to the devil. And how do we keep 
giving place to the devil. We keep from giving place to the devil by dealing with our anger. Mm. If we let the sun go down on our anger, then the devil's going to come in there and deal with it. And he's going to stir things up, yeah, stir sure things up. That. You know, this came to my attention years ago when my children were little. I'd spent all day uh, worshiping the Lord, fasting, and I had such a good day with the Lord and enjoyed things. And then, and then my children came home from school and they started running and screaming and through the house and slamming doors and fighting. And, and I got mad. I got angry. Well, it came because it was down inside of me. Mm. And if, it had, if there hadn't been something down inside of me, it wouldn't have risen up. But it did, and I knew, uh-oh, there's something inside of me that I've got to deal with. So I want to talk about this. And if we let that anger continue to store up, then uh, we're it turns into bitterness and a root, mm -hmm. and we've, we've got to deal with it. We've got to deal with it quickly. But see, bitterness is going to hold you to the past. It, it's going to things that have happened in the past. And that's going to influence your future if you're holding on to what happened in the past. See, in order to, to receive what God has for you, to receive the future that God has for you, it's a good future. He's already said that. It, it, it's a good future. I, I know the plans I have for you, he said. Uh, mm -hmm. I, they are good. So he's got a good future for you. But if you're holding on to the past, you don't have room to hold to catch hold of what he's got for you in the, in future. the future. So bitterness is going to hold you to the past. <clears throat> now, John the Baptist said something very, real interesting in Matthew chapter 3. He said, bring forth fruit of repentance. So if you've repented, if you've changed, then there needs to be some evidence of your change. And so if you've been angry and then you repent or you've been bitter, then you repent, then you begin to, that repentance begins to clean, uh, clean you out, clean the inside of you. And, uh, but then you need to bring forth some fruit <coughs> or evidence. And I'll give you this example. <coughs> the, a married couple came into a Christian counselor and they were talking about the problems that they were facing. And uh, the woman said, my husband, did such and such to me 10 years ago, and, and I'm still angry about it. And uh, the counselor turned to the husband and said, uh, have you repented of doing that? Did you do it? And have you repented of it? And the husband said, yes, I did it. And I repented of it. The counselor said, you have evidence. Do you have evidence? That's what, see, that's what John the Baptist was saying. You need to have some evidence. And how do you have evidence? It's because of a change in behavior. And so the uh, Christian counselor asked the husband, do you have evidence that you've repented? It ought to be a change in your behavior. And uh, the, uh, the husband said, no, no, I don't have any evidence. And so the uh, counselor said, well, go back and come back and see me in a week. Okay, a week uh, passed by and the, and the married couple came back to the counselor and uh, and so he said, he asked the wife, has the husband, has anything changed? Is there, does he have evidence that he has changed? And the wife said, nope, he hasn't changed. And so then the counselor asked the husband, do you have evidence that you have changed? And the husband said, yes, I've done this over the last 10 years. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. And then the wife, wife's eyes got real big and she said, yes. That's all true. But see, she didn't accept the evidence. She was still holding on to it. And her anger over what had happened uh, 10 years earlier had turned into bitterness. And she couldn't see that there was a change in his behavior. But then when, she, when it was all listed to her and he explained how he had changed his behavior, then she had to admit, yes, that was right. So what you see with that woman and that uh, married couple situation that they had a problem. 10 years ago, the husband did something he should not have done, no doubt about it. But now the wife had 
extended the problem 10 years. She had extended it by um, not giving him any mercy or grace and not even recognize the fact no, that he was no changing. Forgiveness. No forgiveness there. And so for 365 days a year, for 10 years, that's a lot of time of going to bed at night angry. So the bitterness, the bitterness was in the wife. So the man created the problem, but because she carried that forgiveness, unforgiveness for 10 years, there was a root of bitterness there and, and she couldn't get past it. And, and she needed uh, some help. And the same thing happens with, with people today that, that we've got to get over the, the bitterness because it's holding us back mm -hmm. and, and we've got to deal with it. So if I, <clears throat> if I take bitterness uh, and let's say a person does something wrong to me and I'm bitter about it, what the bitterness does, it brings defilement to me. It brings death to me. It causes all kinds of physical problems in my, in my body, including my arteries, uh, uh, hardening of the arteries. Harden it, and, and my heart gets weak. And, and uh, there's so many different things related to unforgiveness and, and bitterness in a person's physical body. It'll eventually kill them. Now, we, we can't do that. We can't just hold on to the past. We've got to let go and we've got to deal with it. And, and we do it with forgiveness and with repentance. And repentance is just simply thinking a new way and, and moving in a new direction, moving toward God. Where we have been walking away from God, we turn and go back to God. That's what a repentance is. And we need to show some evidence that we have repented. That's what John the Baptist said. Bring forth some fruit of repentance or bring forth some evidence. What have you done in the last 10 years that's different than you did when you caused a problem? <clears throat> and we've all been there. We've all caused problems. And it's not the matter of the causing the problem. It's about how do we react? How do we respond to problems because people are going to do uh, terrible things to you. You're going to see terrible things. And I want to talk a little bit about where, where this frustration and anger comes from. And, and Sherry and I have been talking about it this week. And uh, we see that a lot of it comes from a, a, an attitude of superiority that uh, if a person feels they're superior to other people in some way, for example, they have more income than another person. Are they more intelligent yeah. than another person? More are, education. Are more education. Are more uh, <clears throat> doctrine. Their doctrine is better. See, if they, if they think, oh, my doctrine is better than your doctrine, and so I'm going to judge you, and, and I'm going to be frustrated uh, at you. And so whoever has an attitude of superiority, they can get frustrated in a lot of different areas and see they never deal with it. And because they think they're superior, they're not concerned about other people's uh, attitudes and they're not concerned about other people. They think they are right in every case. And uh, that can lead to a lot of frustration mm -hmm. over a lifetime. If, if you think you are smarter than other people or you have more money than other people and, and other people just never mount, uh, they never come up to your standard. And so there's a lot of people with some type of uh, superiority uh, attitude in some area and, and they think they're better than other people and, and other people don't measure up. And so they get frustrated with them. And so they carry this frustration and this anger well, that's a pretty that's a pretty difficult situation, and the reason I'm bringing this up is is it's that, also dangerous. That if if you have this may apply not just to you, but it may also apply to some of your uh, family, and this uh, this will help you learn how to pray for family members uh, who are bitter. See what happens when they get bitter when a person gets bitter. And I dealt with these uh, kinds of issues. The Lord's been dealing with me for a long time about getting myself clean on the inside so that I can have more power and more authority with, 
with him and, and walk in really the abundance that he has for me. And it's the same for you. I want you to deal with these kinds of things, kinds of issues. And uh, it may not be just you. It may be uh, some of your family members that are dealing with some of these issues. And so what I'm talking about here is how to identify it and how to deal with it. And the, the superiority fits a lot of people that I know that that they may not be superior in every area, but they may think they're superior in one area. And, and one thing in particular was about uh, doctrine that uh, mm -hmm. I, I, we know one woman recently, they got really mad uh, about a family member because they didn't baptize uh, some of the uh, family members like they she thought they should have been baptized. And she stopped talking and fighting to, about people just because she didn't like the, their doctrine on baptism. Now that's a, that's a real interesting thing to think about that you could get so tied up yeah. uh, about something as simple as a, an issue of doctrine that you would stop talking to your family members. Uh, and so uh, that person just needed prayer, needed uh, 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 guidance. And, okay, so th the first issue that Sherry and I have been talking about in recent days is this idea about uh, people who get frustrated with others because they think they're superior to them and they don't want to hear their attitudes. See, the thing about bitterness is that you it begins to affect your perspective in everything you do. And, and so nobody... If you're bitter and you think you're better than other people, then nobody can come up to your standards. And so you get very frustrated. And it, it, well, if there's a marriage like that, it, it means a lot of difficulty yeah, yeah. in that kind of a situation. And so, but we're not going to leave it there because we're going to bring redemption to all of this uh, before, the, before I stop teaching. But I'm giving you some background. Another thing that's kind of, that's interesting is a spirit of offense. Uh, people, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are going to talk about you and say things about you, and they, they do about us all the time, a and they come against us and, and uh, are judgmental of what Sherry and I do, <clears throat> and it, it matters a lot what we do with it. Well, if we have a spirit of offense that we begin to take this offense of what that person might think or what that person might have said about us. That's a spirit of offense. If you just begin to dwell in that. And I want you to think about the scribes and Pharisees um, because Jesus went into the temple and he, he cleaned out the money changers and ran out mm. people that shouldn't have been there and doing things they shouldn't have done. And then the lame and the blind and the sick people came to him and he just started healing them. He started mm -hmm. healing all of them. There was a down atmosphere there where people could be healed. And then, listen to this, the children began to cry out and praise the Lord. The children oh, began children. to yeah. praise the Lord. And, and, but the scribes and the Pharisees got offended by that. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine Jesus Christ being in your midst, healing people, and the blind come up, and 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 Jesus heals them, and then then they can see, and the uh, deaf uh, he heals them, and they begin to hear, and the lame they begin to walk and dance, and all kinds of things going on, and and the children begin to cry out about the goodness of the Lord, and and people get offended by that, that's, that's being offended by little things. There's big things going on mm -hmm. and they're being offended by little things. That's mm -hmm. a spirit of offense. Okay, so if we've got all of these things going on, well, you in your own life can deal with it through forgiveness. Be sure to start your day and say, I'm gonna be proactive this day with forgiveness. I, I know I'm going to encounter some things that will make me angry and what people will say about me and think about me may make me angry, but I'm going to take an attitude today. And I'm talking about this every day to be proactive with forgiveness. And then if things have happened during the day and you've been hurt and, and people have done things they shouldn't do, because let me tell you, carnal people are going to do carnal things and it'll suck the spiritual life yeah. out of you if you're not uh, a good steward of what God has given you. And natural people, I'm talking about uh, people that are natural, that don't follow God at all, they will do natural things. You can just, 
You can count on it. You can uh, put it, take it to the bank. Natural people are going to do natural things that will offend you and that they will do things that sh they shouldn't do. They'll do natural things and it'll suck the spiritual life out of you if you don't know how to deal with it. So you've got to forgive. And so I started with a contentment and bitterness. What do you have flowing out of your heart? Is it contentment or bitterness? You can have both. And if you know that bitterness is, is flaring up and springing up at times, you've got bitterness there. Uh, but, but James said you can't have uh, fresh water and bitter water out of the same spring. So your heart is either going to have contentment in it or it's going to have bitterness. And I want you to focus on contentment. Because contentment, see, comes out of your relationship with the Lord. It, when you trust the Lord, then, then you can have contentment in there rather than bitterness. But you've got to deal with forgiveness every day and, and, not, and, and not sin as a result of anger. So you've got to deal with those issues day after day, not let bitterness get a root in there. And so contentment then comes out of trusting the Lord to take care of your problems and your situation. Uh, and uh, Hebrews 13, 5 uh, puts it this way. Uh, you can be content because, because of this. The Lord will never leave you nor no forsake, forsake you. you. So your contentment comes out of your relationship Ship with, with the, the Lord. Lord. It doesn't come out of the fact that well, everything's doing Everything's it's good. good. It's not about everything being good because Paul said, I've been in afflictions. I've been in persecuted. I've been in, in the shipwrecks. I've, I've been in all of these things. And yet he said, I've learned to be, be content. content. So you have to learn to be content. You have to practice being content. He learned to be content uh, regardless of what the situation or circumstance was because the contentment comes out of the relationship with the Lord. Now, there's a real important verse in Song of Songs um, or Song of Solomon, whichever way you consider it, uh, in, in chapter 8, verse 10. And in, in the New International Version, it says that, and, and let me just give you background on it first. The Song of Songs is a song about, uh, we might say Solomon and his bride, but but. It relates to the lover and his beloved. The beloved is the female. Or it relates to Christ and the believer. Right, yeah. So that's what we really want to talk about. It's Christ and the believer, that relationship. Now, it, Song of Songs, chapter 8, verse 10 says, I bring contentment to my lover. Okay, so the bride brings contentment. Now, the contentment then becomes a sweet aroma. So as you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you begin to praise and worship him, you want to bring an aroma of sweetness and pleasure, a pleasant aroma, and you do that with contentment. That's what the bride did, the beloved did in the Song of Songs. And so we want to bring contentment to, uh, to the Lord. So when we go in, uh, and be in, with build our relationship with the Lord, we want to bring contentment. See, if we bring bitterness, if we're complaining, if we're uh, backbiting, if we're uh, saying all kinds of evil, and, angry. and we're angry, then that brings bitterness, and that is an unpleasant aroma. It's a filthy aroma. It's a, it, it stinks. It's a stinking kind of aroma, <laughs> and it it pushes the Lord away from you. Yes. So you want to come to the Lord. You want a close relationship with him. You come with contentment. That will be a sweet aroma. And it will draw him into you and you draw you closer together. Because, you know, James said we draw close to the Lord and he draws close to us. So the initiative is with the believer. When we draw close to him, he draws close to us. When we cl draw close to him with contentment, it's a sweet aroma. It's going to draw him into us. And in that, uh, in that relationship, see, we're going to be more powerful. There's going to be more abundance flowing in that relationship and everything. Uh, but Everything flows. Healing flows. 
signs and wonders. See, we're really talking mm -hmm. about signs and wonders, uh, uh, supernatural realm. So this is about contentment. It's really important to maintain contentment and base it on the trust in the Lord. We're trusting in the Lord. Now, I need, need to make this distinction that contentment is not satisfaction with the natural realm. It's not. So if the devil is attacking you, you're not satisfied to lay down and let the devil attack you or attack your loved one. So it's not about satisfaction with the natural things around you. It's a contentment with the trusting the Lord and your, in your relationship with the Lord. So these are really important concepts. They're, they're basic concepts. We need to know these and, and, and we need to deal with them. But let me tell you, you've got somebody in your family that, that's not dealing well with uh, anger and hostility and and, and and so you need to know how to pray for these things. You, you've got to go to uh, to to the Lord, to the counsel of the Lord, and and pray and intercede. Because if you've got contentment, see, if you've got contentment, then that's going to draw the Lord close to you. You're going to have a close relationship with the Lord, and then you'll be able to intercede for your loved ones who are captured uh, by, by a root enemy. of bitterness. They've been captured. Uh, with a root of bitterness and they don't know how to get free because it just keeps entangling them and entangling them and, and it changes out their life and it changes their perspective on everything they just have bitterness about everything they begin to judge people and judge this person and that person they judge what you do and and they judge uh, uh, what you believe and that and where you go to church they, there's all kinds of judgment coming out of people who are bitter. I want to talk about, uh, and I'm bringing this to close, but I want, I want you to really uh, understand this distinction between bitterness and contentment. And there was a man we met uh, when we, Sherry and I had a mission downtown uh, for the homeless people, and, and this uh, young man came uh, to the mission, and, and uh, he was living in the park, and all he had was a bicycle. He's riding a bicycle. Okay, this young man had lost everything. He had lost his job, lost his house, lost his uh, automobile, lost his wife, lost his child. Uh, and he was in a, here in this city where he actually had been living in a different city. He lost everything, but he came to us in the mission and, and he wanted restoration. He wanted God to restore those mm -hmm. things. So we prayed for him and and God restored everything in a very short period of time. His wife came back, came down here to live with him and his, brought his daughter and, and, and he got a job and he got a house and he got a car. And, and I would have thought, man, this is, this person. It's a miracle. It's a miracle, uh, a miracle restoration of all things, which Jesus does. And, and this man ought to be thankful and, and ought to really change his life. This ought to impact his life. Well, but then uh, we were asked to start counseling with him and his wife, and, and what, what turned out that he was jealous about his wife, and he had a lot of anger issues, and and uh, uh, they would just uh, pop up at the, the most unreasonable times, and and even though God had worked a tremendous miracle in his life, he was still angry. He still had that anger, and it affected his perspective. We tried to counsel with him, but he was just so bitter. We couldn't do it. And, and the, let me tell you the end of the story. Then uh, one night uh, he was beating on his wife and she had uh, just a, 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 a light uh, a gown on, nightgown on. She grabbed up her baby and ran barefoot uh, down a few blocks to a hospital. She called us. We went there. That's the reason I could tell you what she was wearing. She had no shoes on, uh, just a nightgown. And, and See, even though God had done a miracle in his life to restore everything to him, he couldn't deal with it. He still had <laughs> bitterness in his heart and, and it drove her away and he, and he wound up back homeless again. Yeah. It was because of his bitterness uh, that he had. And it just, it, he couldn't, you couldn't reason with the person. People who are bitter about everything it affects their perspective and, and they lose balance and, and cannot take other people's opinion or or counsel or anything that 
That's what I learned from that situation. Yeah. That was just a terrible situation because he let bitterness get in there. So I, I want you to know, and then, and then I'm bringing this to a close, that, that the, this is a real important issue. If you want to go on with the Lord, if you want to move forward with it, with the Lord, you've got to deal with the, any kinds of anger or it, unforgiveness issues that are in your life. Or any bitterness. Or any bitterness. And, and I guarantee you have some people around you that are facing the same kinds of issues. And you need to pray and intercede for them. Deal first and get yourself clean, but then you begin to pray and intercede for your loved ones, mm -hmm. family members that are dealing with bitterness. Amen. Hey, Amen. I believe that this is what the, my portion for this session is today. And, and that is to release the gift of repentance. You know, repentance is a gift, and I release it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I want you to examine yourself. Take, take heed to what's on the inside of you. Is there any anger? Is there any bitterness? Uh, is there any superiority? Uh, then you can give that over to the Lord right now in the name of Jesus, because I release that gift to you of repentance, and that's the starting uh, bringing healing, bringing healing in your body. Um, you know, research, uh, Brother Fred touched on this. Re medical research has proven that rheumatoid arthritis, hardening of the arteries, strokes are caused by bitterness and in that person's life. And so right now I release, I release you from any bitterness that vine if he if that bitterness is there it's going to start to shrivel up and burn up by the fire of god in the name of jesus no more bitterness no more anger no more unforgiveness uh in jesus name and that the lord begin uh bringing healing into your life and into your family uh in the name of jesus in the name of jesus because your future, God has your future in his hand. And he wants you, he wants you to, to, to reach your, your destination and your purpose. And so right now that I just released that repentance, that gift of repentance to you. And also uh, just ask the Lord to bring healing uh, to any um, anyone who's been having headaches. Uh, it's coming from the the back of the lower back of your skull to your neck and to that disc in the top of your um, vertebrae. Uh, I speak healing uh, into your body right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing uh, and, and help to legs and to uh, a sciatic nerve uh, in, in, in your, your hip area in the name of Jesus, so that you'll be able to function and move uh, like you need to, uh, get up and down and walk uh, in the name of Jesus. I just receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just, uh, I thank the Lord for his healing power. I know that you've been praying. All of you have been in prayer and uh, you just, you continue uh, to be prayer warriors uh, in the name of Jesus. I release a boldness to each one of you in the name of Jesus, that you will boldly come to the throne of grace and that you will bring your prayers there and you'll uh, bring your requests there. Uh, that's going to God, the, the friend on, on behalf of, of others uh, that are sick right now, that need help right now, that need deliverance right now. And in the name of Jesus, um, you know, we combine our prayers with your prayers right now. Our faith with your faith uh, in the name of Jesus for Sister Eleanor and Sandy and, and all of the family, all of the family. And we, we thank you for your prayers and we thank you for uh, being there uh, to, to put up the hedge uh, around um those that are sick right now and those that need help right now. 
uh, in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to continue to, uh, to believe the Lord with us uh, in the name of Jesus. What are you going to take from, from this message today? Do you have to unmute yourself? Greetings. Yes, Sharon. Good afternoon, everyone. And awesome word. Driving. Uh, awesome word. Awesome word today. And, um, you know, my takeaway from this today, as this morning, and we had our regular Saturday morning devotion. And the theme has been calling back your, <laughs> your destiny and I mean. your, your alignment. And with God. And one of the things that we don't realize is that as we call forth our destiny into right alignment with God, is that if we're not personally ourselves, we got to work on us because we can't be saying, oh God, I want to be in right alignment with God. And as you touch on unforgiveness, as you touch on bitterness and all the things that we harbor in our heart, God cannot he can't, you cannot get in right alignment with God if you do not release the things that have been affecting you over the years. Amen. And we may say that, okay, I forgive someone who hurt me, but if you forgive someone that hurt you and you verbally say you forgive that person and then you see that person walk by and something just rail up inside of you and an <laughs> anger, bitterness comes inside of you, you have not yet forgiven that person yeah. amen amen so you cannot fall into the right alignment with god and it's a time of realignment and even as we you know we come to a close for 2020 let us examine ourselves you know because it's needless to, to for us to be on here whether it's a saturday month from sunday to sunday and we do not work on us it first starts with us and God cannot take us to a next place and a next level. In him, we can pray all we want. We can speak in all the tongues. We want to speak it. We can sing all the songs we want to sing. But until we get to that place in God and release the things that have been holding us back and release it unto God, then that's when he'll be able to work with us, work in our heart, and realign us back to that place that we need to be. Woo! So we need to to let go if we need you know to let go um unforgiveness if there's someone that hurt you someone who may have offended you someone that you may have done someone wrong yourself and, and because you have not seen the person for a long time you may say oh i forget about it i forgive them no 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 you gotta pick that phone up <laughs> and release you gotta pick that phone up and said you know what I did, you did something to me a while back, or I did something to you, and in my heart, I think I forgive you, but sometimes when I think about it or hear your name, I get a cringe. You have not yet forgiven. <laughs> Amen. God is calling us into realignment with him. Let us examine ourselves, the bitterness, the unforgiveness, whatever it is. Let us release it, the jealousy, whatever it is, because we're living in a serious time. We're here to today and we're gone tomorrow so Amen. in the meantime let us as aspire to inspire before we retire god bless you amen thank you sharon hallelujah amen. stir us up stir us up hallelujah does someone else have a comment they want to make okay i think it's my turn okay marlene um, um, I understand a whole lot about what Brother Fred was teaching today. Okay. Because um, I spent a childhood with a lot of abuse mm -hmm. and emotional. So um, I was, I got to the point that I was pretty defensive. Mm -hmm. And full of a lot of resentment. Mm -hmm. And I lived a life that I was trying to serve the Lord. But at the same time, anyone said anything to me, it caused a lot of resentment. Mm -hmm. But I came to the place that I realized that that resentment 
was not helping me. You know, it was, it was disturbing. So what I'm trying to say is that the Lord led me to a point that I began to pray. And I would have these battles with myself because I would say, okay, I forgive that person. And all of a sudden you would come face to face with that person and you would feel that thing come up inside of you. And, you know, I would fight with myself and I would say, no, I forgive them. I forgive them. I forgive them. And then, you know, all of a sudden that little thought would come in your mind and you'd start thinking. And when you look at it, it was like, what would you call it? A, a dart from the enemy. Yeah. And yes. then I would, it, and I was continually warring with myself. So I got to the point one day and I remember I felt so tired, so weary. And I remember saying, Lord, help me. I don't want to be like this anymore. And I literally felt like something just lifted off my shoulder Hallelujah. and just go in the air, just lift it off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it was such a release. Hallelujah. And I began to feel peace. Yes. But. You know, life goes on and you keep meeting people. And I think it's the, it's the enemy that use them. It's not always intentional. Right. Right. That's true. You know, and I kept warring with myself, you know, instead of just going and telling them, oh, you did this, you did that. I said, no, this is my, I have to get the victory. I have to get the victory inside of me. So it led me to a point that there was a day. And I would say maybe about 10 years ago, I just came to point and says, Lord, I don't know what it is I need, but I need something. I need something that when people talk about me or when they criticize me, whatever they do, that it would be like they're talking about somebody else and not me. Yeah. And you know something? The Lord granted it to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't understand. And <clears throat> years later, I went on a, on, a, on, a, on a medical brigade and I met one of the missionary in the group. And I was telling them how I asked God for something. You know, that when they talk about me, it was just like, it was like somebody else. And she said, you know what you got from the Lord? She says, you got. You got um, spiritual um, duck feathers. She says, <laughs> duck, she says, when he stepped in the water, he has grease on his feathers, so the water just keeps sliding off. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, and, and, and it is true. And thank God today, at my age, which I'm 52, I can tell you, I have such peace. I don't care what they say. I don't, I don't, you know, I'm just like, Lord, have mercy on them. You know, <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, Lord, help me. Yeah. Amen. I'm not trying to say, Lord, you change them. I'm saying, Lord, change me. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Me. You know, because if I am okay, and if God has me at peace with myself and heal, no matter what no one says, it's not going to get to me Amen. because Hallelujah. You know, the word of God says, you know, guard our hearts Yes. because out of our hearts, our hearts the issues of life. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I don't have those war really not to that point anymore. And I still continually ask the Holy Spirit, help me to examine yes. myself yes. that nothing, nothing doesn't slip in and bother me. <laughs> so Brother Fred, thank you. Amen. So Amen. True. You know, that bitterness and unforgiveness. Yes. That's beautiful. That's it starts beautiful. Out in, resent, in resentment, yes. destroys our lives. Yes, yes, yes it, it does. Because it's open door for the enemy to come in and steal whatever God yes, wants. Yes, 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 it is. Yes. And yes, I say, is. I am so important to the Lord that no one or nothing is worth me losing 
my salvation for them. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, Marlene, uh, you you said uh, many things that were were so important. Uh, there was one thing that I took hold of, and that was you said that you had peace within yourself. And I believe that that's part of that contentment uh, that the Lord is uh, desiring uh, to smell and to to get close to uh, is that is that peace. And so yes. thank you for that. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank it's, you guys it's, for teaching us. It's such a blessing. Yes. Hallelujah. Okay. God bless you all. Well, we, we love each one of you, but yeah, we're... Let's give them a few more minutes, see if somebody says something. Okay, does someone else have a have a comment? Sister Sherry? Yes? You know, I, I just want to be that sweet water. <laughs> yes, yes, amen, amen. Um, I really live in in a lot in that for a um, couple years back, you know, I was just flowing nothing that people would say or anything I didn't get it to me. But, you know, it's come that time that sometimes you just um, be careless in your seeking, in your fellowship with God. And somehow along the way, I find that things begin to bother and and I always in my life I always ask the Lord to relieve me when I read what bitterness the root of bitterness what it brings you know and I, I didn't want nothing to do with that and I would always ask the Lord to don't permit me to reach there you know I, mean, I did went through I did went through that that place where I think I had bitterness and I had to ask for repentance, you know, the, the spirit Amen. of repentance, Amen. be delivered out of it. And I thank God that that it, um, today I'm free completely Hallelujah. and Amen. praising God because it's nothing like the contentment and how that um, that that assurance that, you know, to receive all the abundance that God has for us. Amen. 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 And, and it's so important. That word is is um is a blessing because God wants to bless us right now. And so he wants to clean all these things that yes. is a hindrance yes. Yes. for us receiving our blessing. So the church, I think, is a preparation for us to be ready when he comes. Amen. 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 Excellent. Beautiful. Beautiful. These have been wonderful comments. Wonderful comments. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we, we love each one of you, and uh, we will continue to pray for each one of you, and please pray for us, and, and uh, we will uh, be with you uh, next week. Uh, and so we, we, we love you. Bye-bye. Okay. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.